Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Let's make dua inshallah we start. Allahumma ameen. Allahumma anta salam wa minka salam ta barakta adha al jalal wa ikram. Allahumma rabbana yassar wa la tu'assar wa tamam bil khair wa bika nasta'een ya fattah. Subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma allamtana innaka anta lalimul hakeem. Allahumma rabbana yassar wa la tu'assar wa tamam bil khair wa bika nasta'een ya fattah. سبحان ربك رب العزة أما يصفون والصلاة من على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين قال رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل لغدة تم لساني يفقه قولي. tonight إن شاء الله we will continue on the rights and the relationship and companionship between a husband and a wife in the aspect that we were speaking about last. Where we are looking at the in-laws and the relationship of the in-laws. How do we gauge and look at in-laws in our relationship? And we mentioned up to last class that in-laws and the way we should treat with the son-in-law or the daughter-in-law is very important in the way that relationship would continue. And amongst the things that we should mention about in-laws is that if we would remember that when a person gets married on the day of their marriage, most of the brother-in-law, the father-in-law, and the mother-in-law, they will all say, I will treat this girl like my daughter. And then they would say, I will treat this boy like my son. But this will never be the case. They will never be able to treat with this individual like their daughter, nor like their son. No matter how they say it and whatever they say, it will never be true. Because the fact is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made different stipulations and conditions within the hearts of men when it comes to the relationship. So when it happens, we see that when a person, they have a little incident. You know, sometimes a parent will put up with their daughter or their sons with all type of problems. Anything they problem they get with their daughter, daughter or their son, they will endure it. If it's every day, every week, every night, years would pass, they will endure it. But one week of difficulty with a son-in-law and daughter-in-law, finish. They couldn't train this boy or this girl and bring them in the house. You bring this person here. But all of a sudden, before this, you are saying what? On the day of the wedding? I will make this person my daughter-in-law, my son, my daughter, my son. But after a few moments of trashing out things, it doesn't work. You get to realize how much now all what they say about my son and my daughter is really what? Old talk and only what? Appeasing themselves and thinking that they're going to be good. And they're really not going to be good at that. And that is really and truly the fact that many people make this vouch, but really and truly they cannot stand up to it. The real test, the real test of this relationship and in-law we mentioned last, is one when we just look at the relationship of the in-laws. How important it was for the daughter-in-law and the way that she should be maintained in the home of her husband, which may be with her, his parents and with his brothers or his sisters and how much right that they deserve. You see, because when we say like our daughter and like our son, Allah never said that in the Quran. No, in the Hadith, they are what? In-laws and in-laws will always remain in-laws and therefore the laws that concern that is different than a way one will treat with their daughter or their son. And therefore, what is the relationship that binds that it is by what Allah declares. And therefore, what is due to a son-in-law or a daughter-in-law is way greater and a bigger responsibility than your own child. We may not see it like that. We might think this is just someone in my home. But this is like a stranger who we take and bring in our home and have to uphold the rights that Allah has presented to us for this individual and that is something we must never forget as part of our relationship with our son-in-law or our daughter-in-law 
it is a greater responsibility and accountability. It may seem as though this is something very what? Easy to do and we find it going sometimes well, but it is not so all the time. Because for instance, last, last class we just only spoke about the aspect of that in-law relationship. We're just maintaining the privacy of each individual. And we look at the way that they should care about themselves and they just want a little private life. Allow them that. Allow them that time to have and enjoy that private privilege. But really and truly, that individual, when they come to your home, they themselves also come with baggage. And you must always remember that. That an individual coming to your home comes to your home with their habits, with their traits, with their family liking, with their family order and habits and behavior. And that is not something just, I get married, so all of them just vanish. It will never vanish. So in-laws relationship have to understand that when someone comes in your home, don't expect them to take up the same habit as you are and with your lifestyle, with everything that we have, and things will go what? Merry down the road as you would say. Or smooth as you like, it will not happen. It will not happen because there are different habits. And even amongst our own children, we would see that they have different what? Behavior and temperaments. Amongst our own children, we could tell which one is more what? A little hardness, you see, or a little more indiscipline, and the one who is more disciplined. The one who would listen to you more, and the one who would, you would have to tell them the same thing ten times before they listen to you. Right? And that is only within our own family. And this is somebody who is what? Someone coming into our home who was trained differently. Trained differently. And we have to know what? Examine how we could tolerate this and gradually work around it. It cannot happen just like that. So for in-laws in particular, they have to be conscious of this. Conscious of this. And sometimes many of the relationships, you know why it goes good? Is when in-laws, you know sometimes it's a better relationship when you live far away from your in-laws. Or both parties live by themselves. Why? Because there's less interaction and the less opportunity of interacting, opposing yourself to be what? More in control. So the minute the daughter-in-law shows that she wants to be in charge of the things that the mother used to do for her son and shows that she should do it now, then it ends up in what? Confrontation. And likewise, the vice versa, the, 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 the way that it will work is like that. And that, that in itself poses what? A difficulty and a hardship in a relationship. We may not see it, but that is the reality when it comes to understanding what really takes place when they're in-laws and what they would think. And it's not that it's their son, but they must know that their son or their daughter is in a marital relationship and therefore certain things that they were accustomed to doing may no longer be their responsibility nor be of any greater concern to them and therefore when we look at it we look at it with the aspect that you know that daughter-in-law or that son-in-law they have that relationship and what what goes further than this is that the presence of our son-in-law or our daughter-in-law in our home, it should show to us that we are willing and open at times to understand and see new interpretation and new behavior. Sometimes the daughter-in-law will cook and the food may not be what? We are accustomed with plenty salt or somebody accustomed with less salt and say, so, well, we don't put salt and we like plenty pepper in the food. Things like a work, you can cook two, two different in one pot. So either you have more salt or less salt. Or you make two separate pots. So the same what? The same type of vegetables you're going to cook. You know, you put it there. So one is less and one is more. Because I accustom with doing more salt. And that as simple as what? Salt is could cause what? Big problem. You know, everybody in this house suffering from pressure and you want to bring what? More salt. You know, the, the, this alone will what? Trigger something just for what? A few grains of salt. We don't talk about further things yet, but these are just some of the little habits in relationship to even food that would what? cause problems at times. You know, even 
if that person, you know, have their relationship with their spouse, and they have other interests that, well, as you talk about, you know, they, they want their privacy. But other than that, if you look at what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made for that relationship, is that we have a different aspect as well. Is that she also has what? A father and a mother, and he has a father and a mother. And that is the next aspect we look at tonight. The respect for her family, or his family. And that goes in a broad way, because let me tell you what really happens in our society today, is that sometimes the brothers of your wife, or you say, the relationship, your in-laws, your, your brother-in-laws, would look at the boy as being inferior with their what? sister. In other words, they feel that they are bigger than their own brother-in-law. There's never what? Compatibility. They're never equal. And they always have the upper hand. This is what? There's no what? bigger person or higher person or he's just like this that is one trait that happens regularly amongst people that they seem to think that my husband could never equal to their brother sometimes she looks up to her brother even more than she even look up to what her own husband because he might have some other things going in his life but will not look at what her husband with that respect and that happens in our society even in this present time with a relationship with in-laws. And it could go vice versa as well. Vice versa as well. Where you look up more to what? The, the, the sisters and they look down at your wife as being somebody like that. And you know they criticize everything that you do and other like in a relationship. But they are more what? More ruling over our relationship than what? Than the husband and wife themselves. They in their relationship but everybody else brother-in-law and sister-in-law from either side telling you all what to do in your relationship. What to do in your relationship. And it happens so much that sisters or sister-in-laws, it says sisters to the, that, your wife, would, if you have a little argument, they would make that into a mountain with your husband for you. And they will look for everything to criticize because the things that you overlook, they will show it up. The things that you are not you would ignore. They would find a way to tell you that is also bad. But this is your husband and your sisters have what? Say? That destroys a relationship. Sometimes you, you don't understand how in, important it is. Yes, they could say things, but we have to know when to draw the line. Because sometimes when they come in between that relationship, they can mash up our relationship with my husband. And that's a dangerous thing. If you allow your sisters to get like this, same thing can happen. If you allow your brothers to take pl uh, plight like that, it could also cause that to happen. Brother-in-laws, whatever they say, it can also what? destroy that relationship. We have to be concerned that if this happens, we deal with it. Because Islam have a way we do not allow people to pry into that husband and wife relationship. That is the law. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made that hunna libasul lakum wa libasul lahunna. That what is between you and your wife, it is what? Shielded and protected and it should be guarded. They, you are a garment unto them that you all are our protectors of each other. And no one should try to what? Destroy each other's clothing. Don't destroy the weaknesses of your spouse with even your own family. You have to upgrade and uplift and honor your what? your wife or your husband in that relationship and let not anyone try to destroy it in that relationship. So respecting her family is an important part of it now. Because one is to allow that to happen and the next aspect is the true respect for her family or his family. Because this is an aspect that many times is neglected. We look after, you find a dominant relationship many times that the husband tends to pull the wife more to his side of the family in a more dominant relationship and sometimes insignificantly pays attention to the wife's family and sometimes it works vice versa too. Sometimes the husband totally ignores his whole family and starts looking after the family of the wife alone. So it happens on either side and these are two illnesses because one of the greatest destruction there is what? We destroy the relationship of in-laws when we prefer one over the next. Because in this relationship, 
what is the condition of marriage? That was what we have to mention here. Is marriage something that has to do with blood relationship? No. Because there is no relationship there in the Quran that tells of that. That you should treat them like that. A blood relationship and a relationship with your parents is what is the connection Allah talks about in the Quran. He says, وَعْبُدُ اللَّهِ وَلَا تُشْرِكُ بِهِ شَيْئًا وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا Worship Allah and do not ascribe any partners unto Him and towards your parents. You should show goodness. So in that relationship, there is not only the husband who have a father and a mother, there is also who? The, mo the wife who also has what? A father and a mother. Does she have equal rights like you towards your family? Or does she not? What does Islam tell us about that? Would she have that equal right or not? The responsibility for that right lies at the husband's hands. Means that if failure comes on the part of the husband to recognize that the wife should look after her parents when they are in dire need, Allah will take him into account for it. Because Allah puts him in charge over her, and since that happens, he has to also bear now the burden and the consideration of her parents. So every time he would ignore that right, he is ignoring that responsibility that Allah has given to him. And we sometimes think, well, that is okay. Why are you going to my parents for? Every minute your parents. That is what we think first. But not knowing that that has now become our responsibility. That relationship with our in-laws has now become our responsibility. And it goes both ways. Because we look at whom? We look at my mother-in-law, my father-in-law on my wife's side. The wife looks at her mother-in-law and father from her husband's side. Because... They are equal in responsibility. Because Allah has given that responsibility. He didn't tell the daughter that you cannot look after your parents. He didn't say, when you get married, you no longer have that responsibility. Because that responsibility, now my, I am under my husband's care. And if he choose. I can go if I just choose and I can stop right there. It may be right, but the husband should not forget that Allah has given him that responsibility to look after the wife, family, her parents. That is without, goes without saying. Because when he fails there, he fails her family and there lies a big failure. And when that happens, what happens? If perchance that this woman's, your wife, Parents are in need, and the day you fail to do your rightful need for them, that, that one miss will cause such a hurt that all of your life will remain, and that will always be remembered. It will not be forgotten. Because you fail one important part of her, her feeling. You may not have the direct feeling that she will have for her mother or father, Likewise, you will not have the same feeling that he would have for his mother and father. And that is something that cannot change. That cannot change. And we must know that that, that way is the makeup and the way that Allah has created us. And that will not change. But we must know now that the responsibility, Allah did not remove it. Allah did not remove that responsibility when it comes to that looking after and taking care of parents as we call our in-laws as we would call our in-laws on either side. So in that marital relationship now, do we or could we fulfill any type of relationship? And what the hadith of the Rasulullah tells us, he says, وَعَنْ عَيْشَةً رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَلْ عَنْهَا قَالَتْ Aisha رضي الله تَلْ عَنْهَا She said that the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam قَالَ He said, الرَّحِمُ مُلْعَلَّقَةٌ بِالْعَرْشِ That the womb or the tie, that relationship that comes out of the room, brother, sister, mother, that womb that gives this relationship is connected to the throne and the arush of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
And he continues, it says, and it said, that womb, it said, تَقُولُوا مَنْ وَصَلَ وَصَلَهُ اللَّهُ Whoever connects and maintains that relationship, Allah maintains his relationship to the arush, to the throne and the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَنْ قَطَعَنِي And whoever cuts off ties, sever ties, that, then Allah does what? قَطَعَهُ اللَّهُ Allah cuts off his ties and connection to the throne. Allah neglects his ibarat and worship. How important it is in this hadith. It tells us clearly the ibarat and the worship. In other words, we could be as righteous as we like. And every time, you know, we see and neglect the needs of our parents and our in-laws, we are actually destroying our ibarat and worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because next to our worship is that of our service to our parents. And whenever we destroy that relationship with our parents and the maintaining of that bond with them, be it our in-laws as well, we are also destroying our ibarat and our worship. They may not be the best of in-laws as we would like to think, but our duty to them in kindness and looking after them and their health and their food and their being and their well-being is still a responsibility. Sometimes we have animals and they may not be the best thing to us, they are more like a pest to us sometimes, but we still look after them. Sometimes we have children giving us all type of pressure and they still live in our house. What do we say? What we would do? It is still my child. Well, in this case, what would we do? Allah has blessed me with this woman or this husband of mine and these are my in-laws. I cannot change that. The only way it could change, we know it could change. Just move out of the relationship and then it change. Because that is the contract that we make once we take that relationship up. So, one of the things is that in this hadith, we learn the importance of how we must maintain that relationship. So, the hadith is found in Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Muslim. Now, never unnecessarily this de degrade or demean any of her relatives by pointing out their faults or making fun of them. If some one from her family is being unreasonable or inter by interfering in your matters and indicating her, uh, uh, putting her against you, you can intervene to stop this action. However, always be polite and respectful to them. That doesn't mean those people try to mind your business, as we would say, and try to put wedges or try to destroy your relationship with your spouse that you end them. I don't want to see them again. You can see them, they really mash up my marriage. I don't want to see them, they didn't match up my marriage. We did not. We, we are not allowed to do that. We must continue to what? Show the wrong and live firm and continue to show what is right. Because if we create and block off everyone, then where will we end up? The minute somebody says something about you or about your wife, lock him off. Lock off that next person. Take off everybody. Just say, never what? You and yourself, by yourself. And all relationship, gone. Nowhere to be found. Because we didn't do the right thing first. Stop what must be stopped. And we have to stop bad behavior. We must stop what is wrong. And this is right. We cannot let people come tell us, or backbite, or slander us, or say something bad about our spouse. We go directly and solve that problem immediately. Don't allow it to escalate. And you're hearing it all over the place. We do what? We put a stop to it. You tell me where you hear this from. Finish with it. In that way, the person you are doing them a good, not a harm. You are helping your relatives that way. You are not destroying them. You are giving them support to be what saved from that type of thing. The Quran tells us in Surah Al-Humaza, Why lulli kulli humaza tillu? Maza. Lumaza. Humaza and lumaza. Two types of people. One group of people who backbite people. And the next type of people who make jokes about people. Laugh at them. So, you know, if we have someone, you know, to make joke and fun of somebody and just gather a group of them and just make fun about them, the Quran talks about them in the same category as a person who backbite. So, laughing about people, just trying to degrade their position and their status, Allah SWT speaks, humaza and lumaza. These are two types of people and category that commit and will receive the fire of Jahannam. Fire of hell. Because of this Great, great sin. 
So treatment of in-laws plays a very important part in keeping the relationship between husband and wife sweet or sour. Remember that. The way we treat with our in-laws will depend on how our relationship even go in our own home. Because when we treat our in-laws bad, don't expect the wife to what? Treat you good. And if you treat the husband family bad, do expect you to what? Treat you, treat you as good as you would like. Because they always have a little something inside of them telling you, see how you do my mother and father? I'll do the same for you. Even though they may not really mean it, but sometimes it has been there. And the shaitan, just play with that thought. And eventually you might say something one day, but he ha you have it in your thought, thinking of all kind of thing, how he could have been like this, and as if he was his own mother and his own father, and your thoughts just rolling through your mind, over and over, until eventually you just say one little thing about your mother or your father, and you let him have it. Because you were already what? Thinking how he don't like your mother or your father. Right? It is the, it is the responsibility of a husband that he gives proper respect to all relatives of his wife. He should understand what feeling his wife has for her relatives and should ensure that her feelings are not hurt. Special care should be taken regarding parents and siblings of the wife. Sadly, some Muslim husbands tend to have with her relatives in a rude manner, behave in a rude manner, and stop their wives from meeting with their parents and other relatives. Because our behavior changed, you know, we married, and we get married to this girl, our wife, but she comes from a family whose background is not as more Islamic as you would say as ours. You know, we practice sin and everything, but you married her, and I marry you, I didn't marry your family and all this kind of thing, you know. So you see them, leave them right there and come with me. Really, truly, this is not the case. Because no matter what we do, they will still remain her family. And the Prophet said, even if our family, they are non-Muslims, it is still our duty to take care of them. Our in-laws, even if they are non-Muslims, it's still our duty to take care of them. If our wife, parents, they are what? Non-Muslim, it's still our duty. If our husband, family are non-Muslims, we still have to take care of them. It didn't absolve us of that responsibility. It didn't, it didn't write it off because of that. Or because her brother of, of her father like this or that one like that, it didn't stop us because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it clear for us that that responsibility and that relationship must be maintained. Of course, there are guidelines and limitations and to what extent you would carry it on. You're not saying that they're having a, a party today and we must all go on and join the party. We may not want to be involved in that type of relationship, but that doesn't mean that we can be what cordial, nice, or do other things for them or help them with some other activity or some help with something they might need. Those are things we can, but certain things that they, we must draw the line on is these things we do not do, we don't do these things. And we make it clear, but when they understand that, they will know and appreciate you better, rather than you try to do what? Cut them off altogether without showing that Islam maintains a level of relationship. And this is the level it maintains. And they don't go and stoop to any lower level to degrade what you are as a Muslim. Because of relationship. Because Islam tells us clearly that we maintain relationship. But we show that relationship is for the pleasure of Allah. And we don't do it for the displeasure of Allah. Or any activity in such relationship that will cause the wrath or the displeasure of Allah. So we draw the line but we do it in a nice way. And if they understand this then we are they will appreciate us more. Rather than we try to do things in a manner. Cut off everything. I don't hear what we see all this just like that. No. We do what we're supposed to do but do it in the best manner. Islam does not allow this. This is the bond, this bond to hurt her feelings, this bond to hurt her feelings and have a bad effect on their marital relations. Responsibility of a wife is even more. She lives with the in-laws and has to be treated in a more, with more in a dangerous path, a path that could make or break her life depending upon how she handles her course. Because in that relationship, she has what? A very narrow path to really walk on, you know, because anything she do could be criticized. It is very important that the wife shows utmost respect to her parents, 
the parents of her husband and take proper care of them. Unfortunately, a woman makes this as the biggest threat to her peaceful married life. Biggest threat is mother-in-law, father-in-law, brother-in-law. That is no threat. That should be the obstacle, not an obstacle, but that should be the means of getting closer to our relationship. Majority of the marital discords occur due to a strained relations between the wife and her parents or in parent-in-laws, especially the mother-in-law. Wife has to understand that if she does not behave properly with her parents or in-laws, that wouldn't please her husband, even if her parents or in-laws are not right in their treatment with her. She should adopt a course of patience. So now you're not the best person. Everything you do, they have what? Something to criticize, something to say. And long ago, sometimes we hear stories about daughter-in-laws taking licks on what? Mother-in-law. Because you can't clean good. And then a train you how to what? So that they beat what? Daughter-in-law. Just to do the housework properly. No daughter-in-law, you know what time? They're going to take licks, they might give back some licks. But really and truly, this, this type of behavior is long gone. But Islam never encouraged anything as such. But that was part of what we see and hear about in what? Our recent history. But it is not part of our Islam. What we are told is that a wife, especially with her in-laws, should be very careful and take a course of patience. Because sometimes the way that the mother law would speak, or father would speak, may not be in the temperament that your own parents would speak on. My mother and father never talked to me like that. Why are you talking to me like that for? And you just, you just had to get in rage, just had to get red, and they were kind of angry, and watching you, and they see, what she, what she watching me? Who she feels she could do? What she could do? You know? So it already, that one spo spoken like that, and this what other person did what? Become red and angry and rage, that you're ready to say back something, but you're holding it back. But your patience is expressed by what? The way you, what? you make up your face and the colors you start to change into. So that in itself already exposes the level of what? Anger that is within and residing within you for her statement or his statement. So that also tells a lot. So being patient is a very difficult thing for a daughter in a relationship and a home like that. Because you may not get the same privilege of speech as you would have gotten from your own parents. And you would even take it better from your parents than from your in-laws. In other words, if your mother or your father tell you something over and over and they're nagging you, you will still take it. I'm your mother and my father. But not my mother, not my father-in-law. They didn't make me. That's the first thing that will come out. So you didn't bring me here. I married, as well, not, I married your son, not you. Don't tell me anything. So, she straightened them out immediately. Really and truly, this is not what Islam tells us. Dip into the patient bucket and take as much as you need and apply it when the talks come. Because they will have their temperaments, but intelligence under this practice will tell us how much caution we have to do. When a person goes for a driving test, sometimes they're driving good all about, but for the driving test, extreme caution, not even cross the line. Just to pass that test. Imagine in the relationship with your in-laws is worse than that driving test. And that driving test is all the time as long as you're in the house. Caution every day. Caution every day. Look for the red flags. Look for all the danger because that is a difficult task to take on. Difficult task to take on. So, similarly, she should treat relatives of her husband with proper respect and dignity. But there is a word of caution here. Relatives of husband includes his male brothers and cousins too. And it's important that the wife treats them well. But Islam asks her to maintain her distance with them. There is a level of relationship that you talk with them, yes, they know them, but there is also a distance that the wife, if you are married, they must know, well, look, that's that not my husband, but I'll talk to that my husband, brother, or that's a cousin, but that's all it is. And that's the relationship right there. We talk, 
But I said there. It is not allowed for her to intermingle with them closely. But they could talk, they could do this, but it's just the relationship once the husband is present. Alright? So, when it looks at this relationship, a husband now, on the other hand, don't just stand there mutely if your family members oppress your wife too as well. Now, this is the next condition. Everybody talking about your wife and you sit down right there. Like, you know what? She looked for that, yes? She looked for that. She had to open she mouth now. No, but really and truly, come on, you, that, you are the husband, and you just stay that, just let it happen, you know? This is not part of what Islam tells us in the Adab etiquette of the husband in protecting his wife and honor, her, her honor. So the mother-in-law makes it the, the heavily, and now this is a piece of extra ex exaggerated statement here, okay? <laughs> so the mother-in-law makes it the heavily pregnant daughter-in-law cook the bread and on the hot stove while the husband sits at the dining table waiting along with the rest of the family for food. Poor girl, she got pregnant and started to do all the housework. You understand? <laughs> Not today. <laughs> <laughs> so, you're getting that today. You may be the other opposite way around. <laughs> so, while the husband sits at the dining table, waiting along with the rest of the family, you now the sick daughter in law is the maid to bring the heavy laundry loads, the wife doing everything, and all the wins and all the other works. But the husband sits with the family watching TV and doing all kind of things. And she doing all the house chores and she in the house. She fits in. No, that will never happen today. But these are things that used to happen and may still be happening and we don't know. Right? It may be still happening and we don't know. So, even in a relationship when the house and the responsibility of the house comes to the wife or the daughter-in-law, you would say, and all the other symbols around, and you yourself as the husband there, watching all these activities going on and the wife doing all these things, and you know, well... She had to clean, and she cleaned, and you know, your brother come and just put this cup here, and she just can't tell you, why he don't move these things from here? You know, I just fixed this place, look, he come and drop this here now. He in the house, your sister-in-law in the house, or your, her sister-in-law in the house, your sister, she don't have no, you know what? She, like, she don't have no worries at all, she feel like she could do what she want here. I tired clean this place, she. And it goes on, but the wife complains to you, and you just, and you sit down there with TV, and she still complains, and you're still watching the TV. Or you're still watching something else. And you, but you really, you're not really watching TV. You're hearing, but you can't say nothing. Because you're afraid to say anything. Not really using the TV as what? An excuse. To play what? Really, I want to hear. But really and truly, you don't have the stamina to know how to deal with the situation. Next mother. <laughs> so even worse <laughs> it. So in the next hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he says, "One Salman ibn Amir radiallahu anhu says, 'And the Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, he said to us, 'Kala ida aftara hadukum fal yaftir ala tamratin.' He says, 'Whenever one of you make iftar, when you fast and you break your fast, aftarahu bi tamrin, break your fast with a date. Fa inna hu barakatun. That is the blessing in breaking the fast with a date." فَإِنْ لَمْ يَجِدْ تَمْرًا And if you cannot find a date, then فَالْمَاءُ Then just use water. And that is also a benefit. Why? فَإِنَّهُ تُهُورٌ It is pure. These are two of the benefits and barakah and the breaking of fast with just date or using water. Or date and water is just a good combination as well. وَقَالَ He says, وَالصَّدَقَةُ عَلَى مِسْكِينَ صَدَقَةٌ And a charity that is spent on the poor is a sadaqah and a blessing. Wa ala the rahim and that which is spent on family, he says, tithnatani. It carries two reward. One, he says, sadaqatun is a barakah and a blessing, and the next one, sillatun. It maintains family ties. It maintains family ties. So spending on our in-laws or on our brother-in-law or on our sister-in-law or vice versa, whichever side, husband side, wife side. Sometimes you want to know. Who to spend more, or what to spend on, and what is the regulated amount to spend on? Because we don't think that you know, I is my money. I should give this amount. You just give minimum. Really and truly, what is the required amount? Is that make sure that our in-laws they are taken 
either side. The basic amenities should be there. Clothing, shelter, and food. Any additional that we done, it should be gauged and measured with the consent of both husband and wife so that no one will leave their hearts on balance. Meaning that the wife wouldn't feel jealous that you give to your parents more or the husband would feel jealous that you give more to your parents. Balance it off so that you avoid problems in the future because it could come back and haunt you. Alright? So, we should not what expect when we go to that home to be treated like our parents would treat us and always remember that they are still our in-laws and they have their own way. And especially when it comes to looking after sick parents, that relationship must come to a bigger, bigger level of thing. Because sometimes parents, when they become sick, either we give up our wife to that relationship. We give up our, our wife to that relationship. In other words, let her go and take care of her parents. And sometimes they become you know, a burden something. So the husband says, you know what? you always there by your parents. Nothing, you're looking after nothing in the house here. You know, wait, 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 where, are, where are you? What are you doing? You know what you're supposed to be doing? But he should really wake up. Wake up. Because if it was his parents, what would happen? And that is important. You know when it comes to parents and looking after parents, especially when they are siblings in that relationship and are in, with in-laws, each immediate blood relation, brothers and sisters, should not just depend on one brother who is married with his wife. Let him take care of either side of the relationship. That is their responsibility. They're married. They want them. We're young yet. We still have to live life. No, that responsibility of looking after parents should be divided, be especially between the boys, the male folks, and then the daughters, if there is need to look after the mother. Because there are certain ways and the other one etiquettes that must be given when it comes to that. If it is that the daughter-in-law is the only female in that whole relationship to look after the mother-in-law or her mother because of her needs of sickness, then she would have no choice but to do it out of her own good free will and serve that parent, mother-in-law or father-in-law. But if perchance that the mother-in-law has her daughters then it is preferable that the daughters take up this responsibility. It is their parents. It is their parents. And they should not negate or relieve themselves of that responsibility because they are more binding to that relationship. Don't give it up. And share it so it does not become burdensome on one person. And don't think, well, because I am getting the wealth and I get all the inheritance, I will do all the work. And that's how some of us would think. Don't ever look for anything in return for doing the khidmat and the service of our parents or our in-laws. Because they say, well, I mind my in-laws all this time and look, she gives everything to she next what? Children. What about me? And it happens. But this is not the reward that one would hope for from doing this khidmat because Jannah lies at the feet of one's parents when we do their service and take care of their needs. And that is important for us to bear in mind. So no matter what comes our way, we must always remember that when we do these things, we don't do it for any what? Fame, for reward, especially worldly rewards. Don't look for anything worldly when you do anything for your parents. Or in-laws are the case would be. Do it so that Allah will become pleased. And that Allah will put love in their heart for you. Do it so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will increase love in your marital relationship with your spouse. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring the correct benefit in that relationship with your spouse. But any other reason, don't do it because you're, you're, you're trying to do it, you get what? You start to talk like that, you get angry, and you know, you're eating up inside, you're talking everything inside of you, but you're doing it there. Eh? But you're doing it out of what? With a type of what? You want to say something bad. Don't ever, no matter how bad, and if you do the same thing a hundred times, the, the parents get old, they eat, they train on the food right there, they tell them all kind of, why you don't clean the place up? You're a big person, you know, you start to insult what? The old people. If you know you're going to be insultive to them, it's best you don't do it. It's best you don't do it. Because no matter how many times they commit the wrong or the, the mistakes or the, the, they make the mess, it's best to stay out of it if you're going to become angry. And when you're in a more better mood, then go and deal with it. Because that is by nature how they will become and maybe ourselves will become in the same state one day and what will be our condition? Even worse yet, is that the cleanest with our own mess. What will be our condition? So we don't look for what? 
rewards in those things. In concluding this part of it, it tells us, it says that we read that no matter what criticism comes towards our, from our parents, our brothers, towards our wife, we should remember very carefully how often do we see this scenario of people criticizing our, in our wife and saying things about them or the husband. What should we do? Three little steps. Three little steps because you would have more say as the daughter towards your parents, your brothers and your sisters, as the brother to your brothers and sisters and your parents. So what should you do? Quietly get up and help your wife if they're saying things about your wife. If they're criticizing what she's doing, you get up and go and help her fix it. If they don't like how you, she's doing her stuff, you go and help her fix it. So they will have no criticism to hear. And when they see you doing it, they will eat up their words. Because they know that clearly you would stand for your spouse, your husband or your wife, as the case would be. And if they are saying it, politely say something to them in her defense. Or ask her to stop doing the work. Clearly, if they, if they are criticizing her, I will say, stop, get somebody else to do it. But do it in a nice manner, of course. You know, don't just go and do it and say, well, you know what? We change over shift here now. Get somebody else. All right? Or let's, in the other hand, then show them that you, I guarantee that his family, you know, if they do like this, I guarantee the family members might not like this action of his and they will expect his wife to refuse his help. But the husband and wife should stick together as a team. And that is important. See, the relationship with in-laws, husband and wife must stick together as a team. Not to team up against in-laws, you know. We're talking about that. We're talking about stick together as a team to support each other against the difficulties that they might face in the relationship with in-laws. Not to team up against them. All right? Eventually, the message will go across and the in-laws will know that his wife is not their servant, but a member of the family who should be cared for. And that is the upbringing that Islam teaches us about when it comes to in-laws and the relationship that we should share in that companionship. Whilst we are in the house, we must know that this must be done. Maintain that connection with each other at all times. And don't let when your wife be, if something happens and she's crying in the room. And warm to you. And guess what? She has seen, well, well, stay quiet, I'll tell you. You'll leave it just so you go away. And next time it happens again. And next time it happens again. And eventually she say, you know what? Come back, you're fine. She's fine. You close everything, go on. Well, if she wants to go and stay, so well, like, all well and good with me. I, I good here, you know. Really and truly, that is the wrong approach if we did not stand up in the first place. I say, don't become angry, but know the right approach in dealing. Because it's your parents and it's your wife, and you must know how to deal with it. It's your husband and your family know how to deal with it. Because you don't want to create friction and disunity amongst your family members with your wife. Because that's the person you have to be with all your life. And that one mistake that you would make could be so deadly it could destroy your relationship. So you must always remember that in this relationship. And you'll probably earn a diploma at the end of it where you are one of the best, get a degree in being one of the best daughter-in-law and son-in-law achieved by spending 10 years in my mother and house. You know, people always say, I spent 10 years there and I never had a problem with them. And you only go on for six months and you can't stay good? Something wrong. You boast about what? Your degree better than them one because you could withstand the test of time. Really, truly, it is really how much you could endure and how you deal with it would make you a better individual with your relationship with your in-laws. Inshallah, we have to stop there today. Next session, Inshallah, would be next class. But um, let's make dua, Inshallah. Okay. Let's make dua, Inshallah. Allahumma ameen. Allahumma anta salam minka salam tabarak ta'ad al-jalali wa ikram. Samiyana wa ta'ana gufranaka rabbana wa ilayka al-masir. صلى الله تعالى على خير خلق محمد وآله وصحبه أجمعين فسبحان ربك رب العزة ما يصفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين